how can I change, tweak things so that you get it? Because your success employee department is the organization's success. And that's a different mindset. and welcome to another edition of the Ronin Leadership Podcast. I've been uh, away for a couple of weeks crashing on uh, my new book, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but uh, really thank all of you for all your comments and feedback uh, on the previous podcasts. Really appreciate it. It helps us refine and get our podcasts better and better uh, every time we put one out. And uh, also, I would be remiss if I didn't do the, the usual shameless plug and I would like to, you know, first of all, make sure you pick up a copy of my first book, The Art of Ronan Leadership. Uh, it's been out for about a year now. And uh, because of this book and the feedback that you give me on this book, uh, I'm proud to say that my new book, The Art of Executing Ronan Leadership, uh, Planning, Alignment, and Continuous Improvement um, is out now, uh, both as an ebook on Amazon and in print. So, and you can also get both books on uh, my website, mikehowardauthor.com. So please uh, keep them coming. The second book actually probably wouldn't have happened had not been for your feedback uh, on the things that you wanted to see uh, after the first book. So thank you very much. Um, Continuous improvement. That's uh, one of the sort of subtitles in my new book. And that's very apropos for today's guest, Adriana Girdler. Adriana is a personal friend uh, I consider her a mentor in many ways, and she did a lot of things to really help my team at a time when we were doing a major transition in global security, but we'll get into that. But I wanted to read something first about Adriana, and we were jumping before the podcast. I got to put these on because I'm 66 years old now, and my eyes are not what they used to be. So, <laughs> Adriana <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I did, I, did, I did not pay her to say that, by the way. Uh, Adriana is uh, President and Chief Efficiency Officer of Cornerstone Dynamics. Adriana Girdler is one of Canada's foremost business productivity specialists. Armed with a lean Six Sigma black belt and over 20 years of experience in productivity and process management. Methodologies, she launched her company. Oh, sorry. Uh, Productivity and Process Improvement Methodologies. She launched her company, Cortisol Dynamics, in 2008. Adriana has worked in various industries, leading companies to improve what they do, how they do it, and their bottom line. She also holds both PMP, Project Management Professional, and CET, Certified Engineering Technologist designations. Adriana is an entrepreneur, professional speaker, workshop leader, author of Efficiency Matters, the Spark Shift book series, and the Visual Vision Statement Workbook. She is a TEDx speaker, Huffington Post, and Thrive Global contributor, and has her own YouTube channel. She has appeared on CBS, CBC, CTC, CHCH Global, 680 News uh, Radio, News Talk 1010, Sirius XM, and the Globe and Mail. Adriana is passionate about improvement and efficiency in both people and organizations. Adriana, welcome to my podcast. And uh, that is quite an impressive resume. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. I am so glad that we're finally having this dialogue and conversation together. And I'm so honored to be part of uh, this podcast, but also to know you and the journey that you're on. And I am so excited for the leadership knowledge you possess and now can share because your leadership uh, knowledge is amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Actually, Adriana, maybe if you remember, could you tell the audience actually how we first met? <laughs> yes. So, well, you know what? It's Twitter. We were, we were introduced on Twitter and you know, I think sometimes I badmouth social media and I don't mean to, but it takes <laughs> so much time, but Twitter, like professionally, someone introduced us, we just connected and, you know, you were following my tweets and, you know, you were reaching out and saying, I really like what you have to say. And then we ended up talking on, uh, I think a team's call or a zoom call, whatever it may be. 
And uh, that was that. And that's really cemented our relationship and uh, led one thing led to another. And then you uh, brought me in to do some work for Microsoft, which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how, uh, you know, like you said, I agree with you. There, there are some negative parts of social media, yeah. but certainly this was, this is one of the, the positive ones. Um, and we'll get into kind of some of the work that you did for, for my team uh, sort of later on, but uh, as I begin most uh, most of my podcasts with with uh, with my guests, can you walk the audience through your background and your business journey? How did you get to where you are right now? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's a, it is an interesting journey, and I do like sharing it. I'm not going to give you my CV and give you every little thing, but mm -hmm. it is interesting because when I take a look. You know, when I first started down those stepping stones and path to where I am today, there's no way I would have said, oh, I'm going to be a thought leader. I'm going to be an owner of a consulting firm and I'm going to work with all these major organizations. Like there's no way I would have put those two together. But, you know, my journey consisted of, you know, typical, young, figuring it out, graduating school. Um, I went into sales and marketing, which I'm so grateful for because that taught me tons. Then I decided for a career change, went into engineering, and that's what really opened up my world when it came to productivity and project management, which is what I do today. And so there came a point in time when I was asked, hey, you know, um, I knew I went to this course that my company sent me, sent me to it was at the York University and it was on uh, Lean Six Sigma, getting your master black belt. So I'm a now a mm -hmm. master black belt leads in Sigma. Uh, I'm a, you know, I, I do, I, I mentor a lot of people in that world uh, because I came from automotive, right? So back in my early engineering days, I did process engineering in the automotive world, which is very much uh, lean and Six Sigma. Mm -hmm. So when I came into the pharmaceutical world, they really didn't have a program. So they allowed me to take this York university course. And as a result, people in that course were like, Oh my goodness, can you help me? Can you help me? And literally in a matter of the course was a 10 month course. Wow. And literally when I finished the course, I was getting so many requests to help people that I literally made a decision. Oh my goodness. Am I going to stay in the corporate world and, and be, uh, you know, like go up that ladder or am I going to take the risk and open up my own organization? And I jumped into the deep end two feet and I opened up Cornerstone Dynamics in 2008 when it was the recession. If everyone remembers wow. that, right? Great timing. Oh, perfect, perfect timing. Uh, Cause there's no good timing. And, right. uh, it, but I've been nonstop ever since it was, I am meant to be doing what I'm doing and the doors of opportunity open. And I chose to listen and walk through the threshold. And I am so grateful that I did because as a result, I met you, the amount of things that I do. There's no way I would have gotten this experience if I stayed uh, as a traditional you know, rose the ranks of manager, director, or who knows mm -hmm. where else I would have gone. I think uh, what I do now, I I, abs I love, I love. I could tell. Well, I mean, yeah, you've always been passionate about this. And and I think that's a really important point, which you made about taking risk, uh, especially when we're talking in the whole kind of milieu of leadership. Uh, yeah. There are times in your life when you have to take risks. Our, our, our careers kind of parallel a little bit that way. When I left CIA, I didn't retire. I had 22 years and I could have stayed another three or four years, gotten full retirement, but I'd done everything I wanted to do. And kind of like you is like, I wanted to do something else. Yeah. It led me to Microsoft and I didn't know anything about the enterprise world, you know, uh, but got into it and it was the best decision I ever made too. So I think it's really gutsy on your part, but also it's a great teaching point that you made about there are times when it feels right and you have to really be introspective. I think and make sure it is the right decision but when it is you know go for it and you did um so cornerstone dynamics uh i'm very well familiar with it but please tell the audience uh, uh out there what exactly you do what are your main verticals and how, what do you do to help companies out absolutely um so cornerstone dynamics is a productivity and project management consulting firm so we go into organizations and we help them do what they do better. 
So we don't go in and change their product or service because all organizations are awesome at putting out their product and service. But I promise you, you start talking internally and how they do their product and service is where there are problems, mm. roadblocks, inefficiencies, um, you know, people hitting their head like, why do we do it this way? And no <laughs> one's there to fix it because everyone is so busy on the end result that product or that service so right. that's what we do we go in and we help them reevaluate streamline get better at what they do to be more efficient and effective because it helps the bottom line number one mm -hmm. it helps with employee engagement because it's really hard to be excited about work when you're dealing with issues constantly and a lot of those issues are man-made and i don't mean like man-made they're band-aids like oh we had a problem let's try to solve it here oh we don't have time to fix it so we'll just do this and then those kind of stay and then mm -hmm. they layer and layer and as companies grow they actually get bigger so that's what we do we help companies do what they do we help them do it better more effective and efficient with a very streamlined principle and methodology. And even more importantly, which I think is really key, we do it collaboratively. So mm -hmm. we don't go in and tell you what to do. We go in with your team and we help the team see what they have to do because that is where you get buy-in and sustainment, which is critical to really yeah. keep all learnings moving forward. Yeah, I, I, I agree hundred um, percent. Those of you who, some of you know this, but a lot of you don't know that uh, when I was C a CSO of Global Security, we were morphing from our traditional GSOC model yeah. to a BSOC, right? And it was a huge transition for us, not just in terms of the dynamics of what this was going to look like for the security world, but also from the technology standpoint, but just, you know, how we did business and it was going to be a game changer. So, and I couldn't spell process management. Um, and to me, back in the day, process management was like, oh, God, you, I know. Know, <laughs> uh, you know, but uh. but we, we reached out to you and we talked and it's, it's everything you said, you know, a group of security professionals who could be, you know, we had very switched on people, but we could be closed minded, too, because process management, you know, what is this thing? And you came in. And you actually made it exciting, not only because you we went through this process where we pointed out the, uh, the inefficiencies that we had in our various processes and figured out how to to correct those things. But you made it fun. Uh, and you also could relate it to our overarching strategy. I think that's the, the strength of you and your organization. It's like you said, you don't just come and say one size fits all, blah, blah, blah. You got to learn what we were about, who we were, and where we wanted to go in the future our legacy, of course, but where we wanted to go. And then you were able to take what you have and say, okay, I see this. These are the areas that I think we can look at, blah, blah, blah. And you worked us through the process that we became more efficient. We found a lot of inefficiencies and we we're able to move forward. And I thought that was a really great leadership lesson uh, for my team uh, to not be so close-minded about things like that. And also a credit to you in terms of how you approach this with your clients. And I think it's really... I suspect there are a lot of people that don't approach it the way you do. Oh, well, you, you know what? Um, I, I would, ha I have to agree with you on that. And, and I say that because um, a lot of times, you know, we just live and breathe what we do. It's just like, I literally live and breathe efficiency and productivity and project management. It's, it's, I don't turn it on or off. It really is a way of thinking. It's a paradigm shift and you think of it constantly um, and it just becomes part of how you do things. So like, even if I drive and I have a couple errands in my mind, it just naturally like falls down, which one am I going to go first? Cause I want to have the most efficient route and, you know, make, do I have everything? And it just, it's a natural progression. So, you know, right. um, I've been doing it way too long. Maybe it's my engineering mind. Maybe it's all <laughs> that other stuff that comes into play, but it's, you know, I do see a lack of strategy. Mm -hmm. thought process continually in everyday business. Now there are organizations, um, everyone does strategy yearly. Hey, what are we going to do for the next year? But the biggest mistake that I'm seeing, and one thing I appreciated that you did when you brought me in is how do you bring in strategy and daily decisions? Because mm -hmm. everything you do has to be vetted through something. And so when you look at it through that lens, you then get excited because then you understand what I'm doing is connected to a bigger picture. It's not a checkbox. 
it's no, I'm doing something that's exciting. It's connected to a bigger picture and it's teaching people how to do that and think that through. And that's the biggest thing I see next happening in organizations is learning how to teach individuals, their daily employees, all the way that, that coordinator who is helping out a senior executive, that person as well. Everybody needs to understand how my activities are impacting mm -hmm. on the strategy of the organization. Because when you have that lens, you look at it differently and you're not just going to do things for the sake of doing it, which nine times out of 10 in the efficiency world, that's what I have to change because people think they're helping or they're just doing, but they're not thinking how they're doing it and how it's connected. And in all honesty, we got to rearrange stuff because they're doing it actually inadvertently against strategy. Sure. Which is the last thing all organizations want. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's, it's what we call strategic integration, right? But, yeah. but at the end of the day, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. If, when you, if you go in and just you're looking at this part of your organization and without thinking about, you know, sort of the, the macro picture strategically, then it doesn't really fit. Right. So what you did with us was at, at global security was you tied into our vision of, yeah. you know, this helps in your Uber strategy. You know, you connected the dots and then boom, the lights went on. It was like, okay, got it. Right. So this is not just a process management session. This is a strategic integration session to help us build the VSOC, the big picture, right? You need the, yeah. you need the, you, this was a building block, one of the building blocks. Oh, a hundred percent. And it was quite interesting because I always do feedback at the end and the feedback from the group. Cause we did, I think it was like a five day workshop. Remember we did yeah. that big five day workshop because that's what it needed by the way uh for anyone listening who is the leader and you cannot do major strategy sessions in two hours nor in half a day okay <laughs> you need to invest your time energy and effort to do it properly uh so that's my little uh plug because i really do think a lot of times like oh just get it done no do you want right. it done or do you want to think it through and get it done well you want it done right yeah. you want it done right but that's what everybody said they said wow like i I felt like I now finally understood my purpose and what I need to do and connecting yes. it. And that is a goal of a good leader. Yes. That's what leaders yeah. are supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was awesome. That's why we make a great team. And yay. <laughs> Absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. So now, so bringing it back just a little bit towards the whole leadership realm, I consider you a leader, right? And leaders come in Thank all you. shapes and forms and sizes and, and areas uh, of responsibility. When you think about that word leader, um, I mean, what is a leader to you? What are the what are the attributes that you consider to be essential uh, in leadership? Yeah, um, you probably heard the terminology of servant leadership, uh, which I really do believe in a hundred percent. So, um, you know, from an attribute standpoint you know, really, you know, I can list off a whole bunch of things, really good listening skills, connecting to a vision, being able to translate all of that to the individuals. Mm -hmm. um, under, I, I guess, if, if I'm, I'm trying, if, if I were to, a leader, maybe it's more of a summary. Mm -hmm. A leader is, people are not there for the leader. The leader is there for the people, period. That's my mm -hmm. And I really great organizations or departments even, because sometimes you can have a, an organization that maybe the overall leader, the president is, or CEO is maybe not so connected, but you have like maybe a department where you can see everyone just humming and singing. And it's because mm -hmm. when those leaders recognize in order to execute, I need to make sure my people are the priority and that we go there, not the opposite of it's about me. And I find that to be, the biggest distinguishing factor to really well run organizations with great leaders, because those leaders understand the servitude of it. I'm yeah. here for you. What can I do for you? And if you're not getting something, what am I not doing properly, or maybe not giving you enough information in order to do it so you can execute on it? So how can I change, tweak things so that you get it? Because your success employee department is the organization's success. And that's a different mindset. It's mm -hmm. really, a, it's a different mindset. And for some leaders, when they go up the corporate ladder, you it, it can be 
become a little bit of a dog fight, right? You know, people want the position and the ego comes in. Yeah. And so now people are about themselves. And, and I've seen where it's hurt organizations. I've seen it hurt organizations. In fact, we have stories of organizations that have folded because of poor leadership. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. The whole idea of being selfless, you know, versus yeah. selfish. I mean, I think that's, that's essential. And obviously, from your optic, you know, working with so many organizations, you've seen a lot of different leadership styles. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So I know this is anecdotal versus anything empirical. But in the time that you've worked with a bunch of organizations, uh, do you see more of the selfless type of leadership or more of the selfish kind of leadership? That is that's loaded <laughs> it's loaded or do you see or do you see a, a lot of room for improvement put it that way um i see room for improvement but it depends it, it depends on the organization and the industry so that mm -hmm. i find very interesting because i find that there's look at as an engineer i collect data i'm looking at stuff i see themes in right. things and i see patterns constantly so there definitely are uh, some industries that I see patterns in and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this industry definitely um, is not into leadership. They're just, everything's so quick that they're just execute, execute, execute. And sometimes they're successful in spite of themselves. Right. And then, and then there's others that um, again are just, it's again, it's a different industry. They have different, different constraints. Like that's, you know, maybe that's also my efficiency background is I don't, try to paint everything with one broad stroke Good. because right. there is customization to everything. I can bring about an approach that's standard, but then mm -hmm. I have to look at it and tweak it. So it fits accordingly to the industry or the individuals or the department or whatever uh, it may be. But mm -hmm. so, so there's, there's unfortunately the bottom line can sometimes drive bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. I find sometimes in organizations I go into, look, I'm a for-profit organization. So it's not like I'm looking not to make a profit or anything of that nature, but sometimes our sole focus is strictly on the profit, strictly right. on the accounting that we lose sight of everything else at the expense of profit. And what I see a lot of times is have that goal hundred percent, but you have to take a look that if you bring people on the journey with you mm -hmm. and you ensure that you're dealing with them as well so that your organization can grow and it can develop, you'll actually probably have even more profit because mm -hmm. people, when they feel connected to what they're doing and the purpose, they actually put in more energy and effort. And right. as a result, you get better ideas, you get a better output, better productivity, all of that stuff that every organization wants, but yet they don't want to invest in, right? Well, people are going to leave. Well, why are they leaving? That's the question you should be asking. Yes. Okay, not that, yes. you know, yeah. because it's crazy because I have some, you know, I, you know, the slave project management course uh, that I've created yeah. online, practical, little shameless plug there. Um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. There are some organizations that are like, I, Adriana, I want to be able to take that away from someone if they leave. I'm like, mm. okay, first and foremost, why is that your first question? Number one, like that tells a lot. And number two, why wouldn't you want to educate someone and give them great training that's going to help your organization? And if they leave, it helps another one. Who cares? Exactly. It's, it's, it's really, really interesting. In fact, if you have the attitude of they're going to help my organization and it's okay if they take that knowledge um, with them, because it's not proprietary knowledge, right? That's a different story. I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, then that's not, that's not a bad thing. In fact, people tend to stay if you're educating and investing because they see the value in that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing how, how some leaders just, it goes, that goes right over their heads. Right. Uh but yeah, uh, and uh, in a few seconds, talk talk to the audience about your the slave project management. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, so I've been you know I've been a project manager for uh, twenty plus years, PMP, and one of the things with us as a project management company is an efficiency expert. You know, I was just project management as a whole is very encompassing, and it's you know there's a skill set to it a hundred percent. And there are tons of 
ways and documents and techniques for project management. But I found as an efficiency person, that 80, 20 rule, you know, there's only, you know, I only need 20% of what's out there in the project management world, really for 80% of the projects that are out there. Mm -hmm. And it's actually transferable to, you know, business as well. So not, I, I talk about initiatives as well. So even if you get an initiative, these concepts can also be brought in that because it's a way of thinking. Um, and, and so that, is something that I've been over the years, I get complimented on all the time. Oh my goodness, we love your project management style. Can you teach our people how you do your project management? And it's not that I do anything special. I've just streamlined it over the years. And that's when mm -hmm. I went, darn, I'm getting asked for this a lot. So I created Slay Project Management. It's a practical online project management course, everything you need. You know, it talks about the theory, but it really is, that's only 25%. 75% is all practical, all the templates you need lifetime membership it supports organizations but not just for projects and this is what i start teaching people projects you do more projects than you think mm -hmm. and this is what people don't get they do initiatives they have these activities and they don't work well because they're not thinking of it in the right mindset it's like leadership people have the wrong mindset for leadership and then they wonder why things aren't working where people leave or they're constantly have a bad culture it's the same thing with project management. So with my technique, it's like, these are all transferable into just business, generally speaking. And if everyone is basically have the same nomenclature, using the same type of templates, talking in the same, you know, language and understanding and requests, you can still have individual individuality, but you need to have that standardization that is just going to help streamline, make things faster and quicker to propel you even quicker to your goals, aspirations, or strategies. And that's what's missing a lot is people like, oh, we only need project management for these big projects. But what they don't realize is they're doing so much more and they need yeah. some concepts in it. So that's what that course is all about. And obviously, go to my site, Cornerstone Dynamics. I'll Absolutely. Like I said, well, a little we'll shameless sure we, plug. No, that's good. I wanted you to talk about because I think it's important and it's a, another tool in the toolkit for a lot of uh, companies and leaders and their organizations to use. We'll make Absolutely. sure, obviously, we have a link up to that uh, in, in our in our website. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we've talked a lot about your successes. You know, you've had a lot of successes. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is like the standard question they give when whenever someone's coming in for an interview, right? Talk about, <laughs> talk about your successes, but also talk about, you know, maybe a time when things didn't go quite successfully, but you learned something from it. Is there something you can think about in your career or your vast career uh, that's still ongoing uh, that at a time that something maybe didn't work out quite like you expected, but it became something that was a learning experience that made you better, made you stronger? Oh, Tons. There's lots. I mean, yeah. you know, I, no one's perfect. And I always say people learn. Oh, yes, you from, are. Oh, gosh, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> I make mistakes. I'm fallible. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you know what? I, I, I have a personal philosophy and maybe this is the efficiency. I really do believe in continuous improvement. So um, mm -hmm. I really do practice what I preach. I really do live at 24 seven. So it, it, it doesn't turn off. So I'm constantly looking to get better. And I am a firm believer uh, up until I breathe my last breath, I can improve. I, I really, I really do feel that. And I think that's part and parcel with the leadership as well, right? Like really mm -hmm. good leaders like yourself are always looking, how can I get better? you know, as an individual, because that's going to help other people. So, um, you know, I, I say all of that because I, I, when I do my learnings, everything is a building block. So when I look at the, like the real failures that like hurt me, like, uh, you know, like, like I felt like, oh, I was a failure. They were more in my younger years. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because everything that I'm sure there's challenges I, I have now, but I, I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm, sure. I'm definitely a lot older. So I, I I do feel the wisdom I have now really leads me mm -hmm. in a much different way than I was when I was younger. And if someone said, what would you trade off, Adriana, wisdom or youth? I would say, well, I'll keep wisdom. Thank you. I'll keep wisdom, yeah. keep my age because the learnings I have now and the way I approach things, look at it and the confidence and that I don't care. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Really makes a big difference. So, okay. So now that, okay, Adrian, a nice little background and everything, uh, you know, I, I, I think of the times probably, you know, I'll make myself vulnerable here. Cause I, I, I think it's important when I was much younger. So I'm going to say in my twenties and early thirties, yeah. um, you know, there, I think I was still growing, not, I think I was still growing and I always felt like I had to make my point and repeat things 50,000 times. And I remember mm. I was in automotive and they brought us on this three week lean course and we had to all go to Tennessee and it was, mm. we couldn't leave. And it was amazing. Like talk about like, that's where I got my answer. And, um, like that's a whole lean world. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal way to do it. I, I'm so glad I had the opportunity to, to go through it. But part of that too, is we had to do some like personality stuff and it, and um, my feelings got hurt because they, the consultants there told the truth that Adriana, you have a lot of good ideas. It's just that you keep on hitting everyone over the head with it, <laughs> that you people start listening to you. And I was, Interesting. I was offended <laughs> first, What? Yeah. but Me? <laughs> then it, then it hit home and I was like, okay, I was trying I was trying too hard and, mm. and that, that, you know, it just generally speaking, always trying to prove it. And I think that's maybe the youth and, and stuff like that. And, and I'll never forget because I, I think I could have easily took it personally and not have grown from it. Mm. I could have easily gone, screw you, you know, nothing. It takes a lot of courage, particularly nowadays when we get lambasted for being honest, right? Um, to, for that, and particularly in the work setting to call me out, they mm -hmm. did, they, they did it professionally respectfully. I just, you know, that was probably that, that was a pivotal learning for me that Adriana, if, if you're going, which is part of leadership too, part of my leadership style now of that learning, because mm -hmm. part of it, we also did styles. Like I'm, I'm, I'm an E N uh, E E N T F. You know those uh, Myra Briggs? I remember yeah. those, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so they did the Myra Briggs on me. Shy, you're shy, retiring. Yeah, you know, I know. Kind of yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I would always jump ahead and I get upset when people couldn't follow as fast as me. And, you know, and so that was why I was drilling it into people's head all the time. Come on, come on, see it. But, you know, that whole experience and episode and, and how they did it and how it, it I was really hurt by it. I, I really, I was very hard on myself and I thought I wasn't like, oh my God, I can I not do this? Um made me realize, Adriana, if you're going to move forward, you're going to have to bring people along the journey with you. Mm. And you can't be 10 steps ahead and turn around and say, hurry up, because guess what? That doesn't work. Right. So that was very instrumental, a big part of what changed the way I approached business, the way I looked at bringing people along with me on the journey, not berating them because they weren't fast enough. So, um, or they couldn't get it, even though I may see it doesn't mean that everyone else sees it. In fact, that's one of the gifts I have is I can see clearly in complexity. I can point things out. Not everyone can do that. In fact, it's right. a very small percentage of us who can do that from a population standpoint. You know, you know what I mean? Like when they do the testing of my bricks and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying uh, anything else like, oh, I have these special powers. It's just, it's my personality. <laughs> it's my personality. Um, these superpowers. Yeah, yeah these superpowers. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I can see that, but that a lot of people can't. So don't judge it and 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 really move forward. And And that was, that really, that was a big part in molding how I moved forward after that and really cognizant of other people. And really mm -hmm. caught and compassion actually too, you know, how can I bring people along the journey with me, with me, right. because then where there's power in that, right? Like we can move mountains right. together. We can't, I can't do it alone. Yeah. So that, that, that was, you know, that was, that was a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. That was a really hard pill to swallow. I'm sure it was, but it was interesting. And that's a perfect example. I'm glad you gave that example because it also is a, uh, shows your emotional intelligence because like you said 
once you receive that feedback, it could have gone, you, you mentioned one way where you could have said, screw you. Yep. It could have gone another way too, where you decided to become, some people would become insular and say, you know, they're afraid now to actually express themselves or even have a voice because they got, they felt they got slapped down, right? Yeah. But you're able to take that, process it, and then figure out, yeah, you know, they're right. And maybe these are the things I need to work on, which you did, and then you move forward. And so I think emotional intelligence is huge. I yeah. think you agree with that when it comes to leadership and understanding yourself, you know, the things that you need to work on, too, so you can be better, uh, the things that you individually need to work on so that your team is being treated the way they need to be treated and you are leading them the proper way. So that's that's perfect. So I appreciate you being vulnerable enough to to uh, to give that example. Um, you know, one of the things when when we first met on Twitter, I remember. I was joking, you remind me of that old uh, that old series uh, Kung Fu with Kwai Chang Kang, where he used to roam the earth, you know, looking for adventures. And yeah. when we first met, <laughs> when, when, Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I know where met, you're going. I know, right? When we first met, you were doing these things where you would take off for a certain period of time and yeah. roam the earth, and you know, really kind of you you know, figure things out, think about things, obviously unwind, uh, get some introspective, uh, which leads to a question. And you could talk about that if you want to, uh, if you're ever going to do that again, but. You have a very busy life, obviously. I mean, you're running your own enterprise and you're dealing with a lot of heavy hitter companies. Oh, yeah. Um, you have family, you have mm -hmm. home life. How do you how do you balance all that? And and uh, what do you do to kind of unask yourself, if for better, lack of a better term, from the business so you can get your head together and get, you know, just relax? Yeah, I think it's yeah. important in leadership. Yeah, it's a it's a really good question, and I think it's important that people hear what other individuals do. Um, first and foremost, I do not believe in balance. I okay. try to substitute the word with harmony. Okay. So good. I try to find harmony in everything that I do. And the, why do I why do I say that? Because if you think about it, balance is about fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have balance, what are you giving up? There is more of a negative uh, a, a attribute associated with it. Oh my God, I don't have balance. So therefore I shouldn't be doing this. Whoa, right. whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. If you have harmony in what you do, what we have to realize is the ebbs and flows and the cycles of how we live life and what we do. Nothing is a steady state, nothing. There's ebbs and flows. So there are going to be times when you're going to be really, really busy. And if family life is important to you, but you have a launch happening in your organization that you're project managing, let's say, guess what? You're probably going to be busy on that launch, particularly around go live time. You are not going to be able to have a balance 50, 50 of work and home life. Your home will be impacted because you're probably going to work a lot. Vice versa, when things calm down and the launch is done, let's say as example, then that gives you more time to spend with your family, let's say, and do other things and the flexible and freedom to allow for that to happen. So what I always say is, am I in harmony today? Am I okay with the amount of energy and effort I'm placing towards the thing that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Do I feel that any of that is suffering and it's my choice and my decision to do what I do? So I really believe in the word harmony. And I mm -hmm. think that harmony needs to come through because sometimes we say too much, I need work-life balance. What the yes. hell does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, 50, right. 50, 50, there is no 50, 50. It's oh, a I'm cliche gonna, now. It's a cliche. I'm going to be an entrepreneur so I can have home life balance. Okay. That's the most silliest thing I heard <laughs> because I promise you being an entrepreneur and then starting your own enterprise is there is no balance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. You are working your tail off to get your company up and running and going to a point where it's self-sustaining. That doesn't, you don't do that 50-50. You can't do that 50-50. Yeah, so, very, very well said, yeah. So, so that's important. And then the part two to all of that is people always, and people ask me all the time, oh my gosh, Adrian, I don't know how you get so much done. And it's like, well, it's not that I get so much done. It's just that I'm very clear with 
what I want to get done. It's aligned with my, my vision for both my organization, which is right Good. there, which right. is my own personal vision, which is right there. Mm -hmm. And it's all aligned. And so everything that I do is aligned towards the overall vision I have. And based on business, you break it down into strategies and goals. And every year I know what I'm working towards. So when the door of opportunity knocks or there's an opportunity or I need to do something, I always vet it through my litmus test of my visions. Is it aligned with my vision? If it's not, don't do it. That's yes. simple. Don't do it. So look, I always say to people, it's not like I don't do tons of stuff. It's just what I do is leading me towards what I want in my life. So I'm opening up and making sure that everything I'm doing is towards that. But I'm very clear with what that is. And I mm -hmm. love what I do. So that's right. why like it doesn't feel like work what I do. It's it's I get excited and it's fun and you know and you know I do that harmony with my own personal life as well. So, mm -hmm. you know that ebbs and flows. So kind of to the last question you have, how do you, how do you manage it all with family and stuff? I'm at a fortunate part right now. My kids who are young men, they're in university college age. Um, you just want to say, I don't look it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you, you don't look it. You I know. You should have brought me before. I know. No, but it, <laughs> it, I mean, if I took off that, you'd see the, um, no, I got amazing genetics. My mom, uh, shout out to you, mom, uh, amazing yeah. genetics. I'm so grateful and blessed uh, for her. <laughs> uh, she is almost 80. Um, so that just gives you an idea. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, um, but you know what? They're now older. So when they were, when they were younger, again, it was the choices I made sure. always leaning towards a vision. And I ensured that I was there for them and I made those points. And as they got older, I was able to back off a bit, you know, and I also honored uh, who I was because even when the kids were like mid-age, like in their mid-teens, I, mm -hmm. I did do a lot of travel on my own. Why? Because I really felt in order to honor who I am and be the best person I can be, I needed to ensure I didn't sacrifice everything about me. And, and I think people who are connected recognize that in order to give to others and really be great leaders and caregivers, the first thing that they always say is you got to take care of yourself as well, not yes. selfishly at the expense right. of other people, but to a point where <clears throat> am I doing, you know, am I honoring some of the things or do I feel like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just not doing it because I'm, I'm giving too much. So it's, it's that that harmony i don't want to say balance it's that harmony is a great is a great that word harmony. That. i'm gonna use it I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal it from please me. no go for it i always tell people all the time <laughs> think harmony not balance because balance sh will dictate you're doing it wrong because you'll yeah. never get balance you'll never yeah. get balance yeah no you're you're spot on 100 you, 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 i'm no good to my troops if i haven't taken care of me yeah you know like you said and, and not a selfish way as you said but if if i'm not if my head and my heart and my spirit are not together, yeah, then I'm I can't execute on the mission, and as sure as hell, I'm no good to my troops. Uh, so you've got to take care of this first, like you said. Um, but I, I, you know, I think I think it's I think it was a great answer, and I do remember those days when I used to follow you, and it was just a <laughs> kick to watch where you were around the world and <laughs> doing your thing. It was just really, you know, it was really cool. So, and I thought that was even back then, you know, and I was. I was a baby CSO then, right? But even back then, I, I was thinking that from a leadership perspective, that was that was great uh, that you could take the time, come back refreshed, and kind of do your thing. Um, so we kind of walked this journey here, right, to, up to where we are right now, successful entrepreneur. You've got a lot of things going on that are working, that switched on. Um, what What's in the future for... Adriana Girdler. I mean, what do you, oh. what do you look, what do you look, as you look ahead five, 10 years, whatever it is, you know, what, what, what's, what's on the horizon for you? Absolutely. I'm happy to answer it. Cause I totally have a plan. <laughs> really? That's unusual for you to have a plan. Anybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, life is about involvement. So evolving. Okay. So my business is evolving. So my business has always been very service heavy oriented. And now I'm at a point in time in my life as well, where I, I see that 
transition of, I, I will always have the business that that yeah. will never go away um, because I love it too much. Mm -hmm. So I will always say, but I, I see like the slave project management, you know, now having more product offerings uh, as you know, I do keynotes. So really transitioning mm -hmm. more into that. I'll always keep a little bit, my, my toe will always be in the water of doing some of the service oriented stuff because I really feel that keeps you fresh. So I'll still do that stuff. I have a team. So, you know, my team will do stuff, but I'm going to slowly move because, you know, the way we do, it, we're a boutique consulting firm. I'm the brand. So, you know, my team helps me, but we'll do that transition and I'll transition to more of the sleigh, um, helping organizations more of really cherry picking, which ones I want to do and, and not such, I do a lot of heavy hitting projects right now and it's great, but I'll transition out of that and move towards just more keynote speaking and really growing the slave program. So that, that transitions to being the, the main fundamental uh, income funnel coming in through the organization versus let's say the service oriented. So you always have to, you have to work on that stuff. That doesn't just happen out of the blue. You got to put strategy right. plans and, you know, I'll continue with my YouTube channel. So that's part of that whole thought leadership and what mm. we use to help with the click funnel of bringing our slave program through for individuals. Obviously I do talk to corporations and, you know, corporations buying it for their organization and uh, their departments. And that is the other avenue as well. So yeah, so that's that's the focus, and I'm gonna and uh, I'm gonna travel with so that little I don't yeah. know if you see it. It's a little world, and it has stripes, which is like the Cornerstone logo. Right. And I'll I'll do more traveling, but it's gonna be through Cornerstone, so I can see myself doing more uh, high level global speaking engagements and stuff like that. So. Yeah. No, that, I think it's great, and from a leadership perspective, as like you said, having not sitting on your laurels, but moving forward and always pushing it and having strategy is really important. Um, and is, you know, before, before we wrap this up, uh, you know, I, I love your YouTube channel. Uh, how long have you been podcasting? Um, and how have you been able to grow your audience? So we've been officially really getting into it probably in 2019 is when we really started being dedicated to the channel. I mean, I, I opened wow. up the channel a long time ago, but I would maybe it have like five videos on it. It'd be like one, it, like I didn't, I knew nothing right back then. I believe you me in hindsight, I really wish I did it much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> believe you me, because it takes a lot of energy and effort. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, again, about 2019 is when we really said, okay, dedicated. We are, we are, totally dedicating to YouTube as part of one of our strategies, actually, that was one of the strategies that we had mm -hmm. again, stepping stones because sure. we had other strategies um, as well up until then. Um, and ever since then, I've, the channel has gone through three revisions because, you know, you have to find your niche on YouTube. Um, I'm an education information provider. I'm not entertainment. So that's one of the things that we mm -hmm. always have. Like we have this big banner, you know, uh, you know, I'm not an entertainer on YouTube. I'm an entrepreneur. And that is really important to remember because I'm not there to entertain because believe you me, if I want to do something entertaining, I can get lots of likes, lots of views, but it's not going to lead me towards the ultimate goal, which is like to provide information, be a thought leader and to sell the program. Right. I mean, sure. you know, I, I don't hide the fact that that's why we're there. I give out great free content. There's the value in it, but you know, if you want more, go check out Slay. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, you evolve the channel. So I originally had it more high level, like, you know, um, how to be better at business. And then we kind of ironed it out. Well, maybe we'll focus on a younger generation, how to be better at business. And then we made the decision, you know, Adriana, you're a project management expert. Just make it a project management uh, channel on how to excel with project management. And ultimately, you know, you have career points in there as well. So as soon as we actually did that and found that niche, it exploded. Um, we're almost at hundred K with subscribers. So pretty excited about that. That's a very, mm. uh, yeah, I can't wait for the little silver mm. black to come my way. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Uh, a lot of work, energy and effort. Uh, the thing with, uh, social media is, um, you have to do your research on your topics. So you have to find out what is being asked, but there's not a lot of videos out there for us. So, you know, Google has those analytics really go into the data um, see who's really doing well. And is there, you know, is there something in there that you can, uh, springboard off of not take springboard off of, right. Cause some people take stuff. Sure. Um, 
and really engage out there in the social media world. So like, you know, we, I have a team, thank goodness, because I couldn't do what I do and um, also do everything. But, right. you know, we really engage in the social media and that becomes important, all the channels, the promotion, the consistency. So we worked, being a thought leader has been on my corporate vision since day one day one, when I opened up the doors in 2008, that has mm. never changed. The evolution of my thought leadership has definitely evolved over time. Cause when I first started my thought leadership had nothing to do with YouTube, nothing. Mm. Right. But it had everything to do with, I knew I wanted. So I started off with writing articles in association magazines. That's how I started my thought leadership wow. journey. Yeah. So, but then it progresses. And again, we're very clear. We put the strategy behind it and we understood the vision and we put the building blocks and yeah, until we said, yep, it's YouTube time. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh my God, that's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Yep, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, I would encourage anybody to, to, to watch you on YouTube and you have great content and it's consistent. Yeah. You're there a lot and yeah. your, pre your presence is there a lot. I think it's, that's awesome. So thanks for running people through this. Um, the last question is basically you have any any thoughts you want to leave to my listeners, your listeners uh, about life, about leadership, about whatever? Well, I, I want to, first of all, I have so much respect for your leadership. And I think what you have to share is critical and important. Important. And I'm going to say a plug for you, definitely get your book because there is such golden nuggets in there that I think is amazing. And I love that you're doing these podcasts. I think if we can learn from other successful leaders, don't reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. um, observe, uh, borrow, uh, give credit where credit is due as well. If you borrow, um, come from a place of integrity, really connect inwardly, understand what you want out of life, but don't do it at the expense of other people, because that is ego leadership. When you're mm -hmm. just, you're willing to step on the backs of others to progress yourself. You do not have to do that. There is nowhere. In fact, you get more out of life and abundance if you actually lift people up with you. And I think those are really my, my parting words. Cause I think sometimes I see in business people stepping on the backs of others, the politics, yeah. things like that. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, we can all, we all have something to say. We all have value and it's understanding and tapping into that and building off of that. That is really important, but it's sometimes hard when, you know, let's say it, it can be difficult in some situations, but not impossible. It's all in the mindset. And the person that is going to change is you, mm -hmm. not the other wow. person, but you. So. Yeah. Those well said. Favorite. Well Are said. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, Adriana. Wow. This has been, this has been wonderful. Uh, and uh, this is actually one of the most enjoyable podcasts I've had. Aww. Not just, be, not just because you're a, uh, a dear friend, but just because it's interesting, I'd say 90%, that's just off the top of my head, the folks that come on this podcast have some affinity with the security world as leaders, right? And you're you're not that, you you're, you come from a different point of view, but you, you're, you're definitely a leader that people need to look at and can learn from. I've learned from you. I know a lot of my colleagues uh, at Microsoft, we learn from you. Uh, but you have so much out there to give and to impart. And you do it with a, a, a willing soul. You're doing it with a giving soul with the right intentions. And so I've always appreciated that about you. Uh, like I said, the, the links to your website, to your TEDx, and to your YouTube will be uh, on our on our podcast. And Thank I just you. encourage all of you to just, just, just go seek out uh, Adriana before she roams the earth some sometime in the future you know i again. will be in 2023 i don't know what or where yet but it's definitely <laughs> on my list because awesome. i am dying to do some good traveling <laughs> awesome awesome well thank you so much uh for being on the show and uh, uh best of luck in in all your endeavors and best to you and your family oh thank you so much mike and you too and it was a joy and a privilege to uh, be here and thank you so much for inviting me Thank you. So that's that's it for the podcast for today. Uh, as always, click the subscribe button. 
Uh, and uh, please give us the feedback. Uh, we want to know what we're doing right and what are the things we can do to improve so we can make this podcast better. Uh, please, you know, again, as I said, uh, pick up a copy of my uh, my previous book, The Art of Roman Leadership, and my new book, The Art of Executing Roman Leadership uh, Strategies, is out now on Amazon.com and MyPower.com. So uh, until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm going to stop recording.